Hello everyone. This is the pre-market report video for 14th February 2023 in terms of Nifty and Bank Nifty. First, quickly let's see what happened yesterday in the Indian market. Like last week, there were bad news about Adani stocks such as Moody downgrading some companies from stable outlook to negative one, which we discussed in detail in the last pre-market video. Again, that made the Adani stocks to drop and hit the lower circuit, and as a consequence, it did affect all the banking stocks, especially the PSU ones. I mean, most of the investors, including retail people, generally don't trust the PSU stocks, especially the banking ones. Since in the last 20 odd years, Indian PSU banking stocks really got a very bad reputation. But due to some promising reduction in the NPA in the recent times, it did run up heavily. For example, in the last one year, Nifty index gave the return of only 5%. Even Bank Nifty, which predominantly consists of private banks, gave the return of only around 12%. Whereas Nifty PSU index gave the return of over 37%, even after losing 12% year to date. Clearly, PSU banks did a quite a run up. It's obvious, especially nowadays after the good results, investors were exiting those stocks. So that's what happened yesterday. I mean, now all the PSU banks Q3 results were announced by last week. Thus, investors were booking profit. This made the PSU banks to drop over 2.5% yesterday. Anyway, coming back to Nifty. It opened flat but within 45 minutes because of the selling in banks made the nifty to drop over 100 points but the good thing is throughout the day it maintained thereby plus or minus 25 points. Sector wise PSU banks IT and metal dropped over 1% whereas FMCG and capital goods were the only sector that ended in positive. Surprisingly yesterday institution wise both were net buyers. I mean, FII net bought shares worth approximately 1,300 crore rupees and DIA net bought shares worth approximately 520 crore rupees. Then the advanced return ratio was 1 is to 2, which means for every one stock advance yesterday, two stocks were declined. Then coming to US market, unlike Indian market, S&P 500 opened flat. Then throughout the day, it moves just upside. There was no particular event or economic data, it's just a pure short covering before the inflation data today. I mean last week for the first time this year all three major index were dropped. So last night was more of the buy on dip especially in Microsoft. For those who don't know, Microsoft is one of the major shareholders in ChatGPT and there was a rumor or the expectation floating around that ChatGPT is going to incorporate in the Bing search engine. And that's the reason despite all positive. Only Google and Tesla didn't increase much. Google because of its recent A issue and Tesla because of its recent supercharger issue, again which we discussed in detail in the yesterday's pre-market video. In the end, Dow Jones increased by 1.11% and S&P 500 increased by 1.14%, Nasdaq was up by 1.48%, however US VIX dropped only by 1% and it is still trading about 20 Another reason for the positivity was the drop in 10-year treasury bond yield. I mean on Friday, it closed around 3.75%. That last night dropped near 3.7%. So this also helped a bit since the Friday's negativity in US market was mainly due to the sudden increase of bond yield. About oil, there is not much as it dropped just 0.5%. I mean at the time of this video, WTA crude oil is trading around 79 US dollars per barrel and Brent crude oil is trading near 86 US dollars per barrel. In terms of Indian ideas, despite positive US tech stocks, both Indian IT ideas closed 0.5% negative. Then about banks, despite being negative Indian market, it closed positive of 0.5 to 1.5%. Regarding HS Nifty, at 3 Indian standard time, it closed at 17,859, which means it's kind of indicating 60 points gap up opening. So these were the things that happened in global market. Now let's see the Indian market related info. First, yesterday in the after market house at 5.30 p.m. Indian standard time, Ministry of Statistics released the consumer inflation for January month. The data comes as 6.52% against expectation of 5.9%. Generally, this is bad number since it's above the RBS limit and it comes as above the investor's expectation. In normal times, market may give some importance to this. But today, I think there is a chance it might ignore the Indian inflation and expect and trade based on the US inflation data which is due tonight. Anyway, today at 12 p.m. Indian standard time, Ministry will be releasing the wholesale inflation data. 
let's see how the market is going to react to that every day i want to stop talking about adani but always there is a new information anyway coming back to topic Today Adani Enterprise will be releasing its Q3 earnings and it will be very interesting. Let's see whether it's going to boost the same revenue growth or not. Additionally, in order to calm the investors, Adani hires Grant Thornton, world's sixth largest auditing firm to do independent audit. Again, let's see whether at least this stops the stock fall. As a summary, short covering made the US market bullish and because of that, despite the bad inflation number, Yes, Shiv Shifty is indicating a 60 points gap up opening and private banks looks positive however it still looks weak. Also just avoid City Union Bank since there is a huge short build up on those since its asset quality deteriorated. Now coming to technical in daily chart both Nifty and Bank Nifty forms a bearish engulfing candlestick formation suggesting more weakness in the near term. I mean if Nifty breaks 17700 then that could lead to a faster fall towards 17500 to 17550 band so the trend looks sideways to negative in terms of bank nifty it kind of stuck between 41100 and 41750 zone during the past six sessions now it's important that it has to hold above 41250 for any upset potential towards 41750 and 42000 If it drops we can see further weakness around 41000 and then 40750 levels regarding moving averages and technical indicators for nifty on daily chart last friday closing indicates the buy signal that summary now turns to sell signal in both the cases i mean at present nifty moves below 5 20 50 and 100 day moving average it's trading only above 200 day moving average and 10 day simple moving average and the story on bank nifty is more or less exactly the same as nifty i mean in both moving average and technical indicator summary it's a sell signal then regarding open interest analysis based on change in open interest for nifty some put options were unwound between 17800 to 18000 then maximum nearby new call options were added at 17800 thus 17800 looks like a immediate resistance to break so if gap up opening above 17800 can trigger the unwinding as well if you see the overall options open interest 17500 got the more put option open interest without any call option open interest thus 17500 is the strong support and 18000 got the huge call option open interest so 18000 will act as the strong resistance for this whole week expiry In case of Bank Nifty based on change in open interest again small put options were unwound between 41500 and 41700 and more new call option open interest were added at 41500 so 41500 is the immediate hurdle to break then based on overall open interest maximum put options without call option is present at 40500 so 40500 is the strong support on the other side 42000 can act as the good resistance if 41500 broken means so that's all in this video hope you all got some useful information please consider subscribing the channel and liking the video so it will help me beat the algorithm and also motivate me to do more please don't make any investment decision based on this as i'm not a sebi registered advisor i'm doing it for my and viewers educational purpose only thanks for watching